Well, hello friends. This is the day the Lord has made. So you might as well go ahead and rejoice and be glad in it because we believe that everything that's laid out for us today, we believe God did it because we're walking in step with him. And we know that everything that he lays out somehow or the other is going to work out for our good at the end of the day. Well, welcome to Friday's edition of Take 5. We've finished another week now, so let's go ahead and gather our faith around us and let's end this week strong as we go into the weekend. We're dealing with the subject, the law of consequences, and we've talked about this week the consequences David had to deal with as a result of his sin with Bathsheba and the murder and deceit uh, in the life of her family and her husband, uh, Uriah the Hittite. And we've learned some pretty powerful things and we have saw how this story really unfolded in a big way uh, as David's family just really fell apart because of what he did uh, with Bathsheba. There's really just one point to this message that we started talking about yesterday, and that is this. Through grace, God forgives all our sin, but he does not remove all the consequences. Yesterday, we talked about how glorious the forgiveness of God is uh, through his grace. Now, today, I want to end the week by talking about how the grace of God still imposes the consequences of sin. Watch this. 2 Samuel 12, 13, 14, David said, I've sinned against the Lord. And Nathan the prophet said, yes, you have, but the Lord has forgiven you and you won't die for this sin, but you have given great opportunity to the enemies of the Lord to despise and blaspheme him so your child shall die. The NIV said, you have shown utter contempt for the Lord so this child will die. Now we need to understand that the consequences are just as much a part of God's grace as the forgiveness is. If God forgave us and then wiped out all the consequences of sin, we would never learn the seriousness of sin and we'd just go right on and sin the more and would never learn anything from the grace of God. We wouldn't learn to fear God. We would not apprehend his righteousness, nor would we see any need to do so. So, even though God pardons all of our sin and he restores us to fellowship, as we talked about yesterday, he still graciously imposes consequences into our life. Let's trace those consequences um, that David felt real quick. And um, maybe that if we see this, maybe we'll be a little more fearful of sinning so rapidly in our life. Number one, David had sown death and he reaped death. Uh, he murdered Uriah, uh, the Hittite there, and David reaped murder back into his own life. First, the baby that he and Bathsheba conceived died. Then Absalom murdered his son Amnon, and then Absalom was slain in rebellion against David. And then fourthly, David lost another son, Adonijah, at the son, hand of his son Solomon because Adonijah was trying to usurp the throne of Solomon. Now, David was dead when this happened, but still, this is the consequences of his sin with Bathsheba because God said, the sword will never leave your house. Listen to me, friend. Some consequences will follow you even beyond the grave. The second thing, David had sown sexual sin and he reaped sexual sin. David never curbed his lust for women, and eventually his polygamy turned into adultery. And Nathan said that the consequences he would reap would never leave his family. Well, the first crop that sprung up that David had to reap was his son Amnar raping his daughter Tamar. And then the second was Absalom taking over King David's Hiram and sleeping with David's concubines in view of the whole city of Jerusalem. Third, David had sown deceit and he reaped deceit and betrayal. David tried to deceive Uriah into thinking that the child conceived with Bathsheba was, was his instead of David. And when that didn't work, then David sent his own death warrant in the hand of Uriah back to the battle. Uriah the Hittite carried 
a message, a sealed message back to Joab, captain of the army. And in that message, it, it was to tell Joab to make sure that Uriah was killed. David reaped deception just like he sowed deception. Ahithophel, his advisor, plotted against him with Absalom. And David even referred to that when he wrote Psalm 41, 9 and said, my close friend, someone that I trusted, who I shared my bread with, has lifted up his heel against me. I hope you get the picture today, how the consequences of David's sin played out for years there. God forgave him immediately, but he did not remove the consequences. And that is a much, as much of a part of God's grace as forgiveness is. So David paid a, an awful price for one moment of pleasure. Now you may be thinking, man, I've, I've sowed a lot of bad seed and, and, and what's going to happen to me? Or you may be in that group of people that's thinking still, well, that was David and that was old covenant and God doesn't do that. But don't forget Galatians 6, 7 that said, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that's what he will reap. That is the law of consequences. Do not be deceived. It may look like on the surface that we can get away with sin, but it is not so, friend. God is not mocked. He will forgive us immediately. The matter of fact, the Bible said he is faithful and just to forgive us. He will forgive us immediately, but the consequences he will not take away. Let me tell you three things about how you can be deceived by sin real quick. And this is a good way uh, to measure whether or not you're being deceived by it. Number one, you need to know that grace is free, but it's not cheap. It's completely free to us. God offers it free to us, but it cost him everything. He had to give the life of his son. Secondly, sin is cheap but it's not free. It won't cost you anything to buy into the market of sin, but in the long run, you will pay the price for it, friend, and you need to understand that. And thirdly, freedom is always in the sowing, but it is never in the reaping. Fred Allen said one time that most people spend six days each week sowing wild oats and then go to church on Sunday and pray for a crop failure. Well, let me tell you something. It just does not work that way. God will forgive you for every wild oat seed that you sow. But my friend, be sure you will have to reap the consequences. We're, we're free to sow whatever we want to, but when it comes to reaping the consequences, we're not free. We must reap them whether we want to or not. We do not have a choice in the matter. So I hope you can take all of this and apply it to your life. And I hope you don't think this is some far-fetched thing. It's, we, we see it right there in the scriptures. Our flesh wants to deny that this is a reality. Oh, there's no way that I would have to reap. There's no way that God would expect me to do that. But it's God's way of teaching us through his grace to not do it again. It's God's way of teaching us what we learn in the book of Titus when Paul said, the grace of God has appeared unto all men and it offers salvation, but it also teaches us to say no to ungodliness. That's what God wants to do. Well, hey, it's been great being with you today. Hope you have a great day today and weekend. I look forward to being with you in worship service on Sunday. And I look forward to being right here with you again on Monday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day.